Hello everyone, welcome to another podcast and in the internship diary season, like we will be hosting a lot of people and today we have Anna with us. If you are following me for some time, you must have seen in the last podcast, I have shared with you guys how you can get into Google if without doing computer programming. In this video, I will be talking through uh, Anna and he will be explaining his journey on how he got his W internship at Google and then he converted that to his B offer as a full-time role. So folks, since this is a podcast, there are some questions that might not interest you. Make sure to check the timestamps which will be given in the video so that you watch the questions which you have and you can get the perfect answers from Arnav. So Arnav, welcome for the episode. Do you mind introducing yourself a bit? Hi, Nikit. Uh, thanks for having me, dude. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, I am Arnav Sen. I am currently in my final year doing Bachelors of Engineering from IS to Shipwood. Uh, of the st- com- I'm using like I'm in the stream of computer science and technology. Uh, I was as Aniket said a Swede intern last summer, and I got a uh, PPO. Other than that, I have been uh, you know a huge uh, open source fan. I've been contributing to a bunch of uh, organizations. One of my notable contribution is towards the Bitcoin project as a part of the Summer of Bitcoin mentorship program that I was a part of. And yeah, other than that, I've done a little bit of competitive programming, CTF and hackathons. So, yeah. Okay, that's great, Arnav. So, folks, actually, I met Arnav during our chemistry classes during our JE days. And I was also re- reading about him now because he now he is doing a lot of things, which is significantly a lot. So, Arnav is a bit shy and I guess he is not told about himself properly. And I would like to add something on that, that he's also currently working as a in a remote startup wherein you know like a lot of people who you are dreaming to join so you know so if you guys want Arnav to be speaking about what his experience and how did he got into remote job do let us know in the comments and I will be inviting him again and I hope he will be joining us soon so before we uh, start our discussion on how we were able to convert you know like the internship to PPO so do you mind sharing you know like how you were reached out and how did you come to able to offer like you know this google is hiring and uh, how did you apply and everything like maybe you can just have that you know share in just two to three minutes i guess that will be you know fun to hear from you yeah sure Anita. yeah um, yeah i also forgot to add that i was a, i'm currently a remote uh, intern at cypher um so coming back to that question um uh the the time when I applied, Google did not come to our campus, so I had to go through the off-campus route, uh, which we all know is a bit competitive. So I applied with the help of a referral from one of my seniors, and it was I think mid-August that I applied, and around September, and I got the uh, mail from a recruiter that my profile has been selected for the uh, shortlisted for the interview rounds. I had a week to prepare for the interviews. I had, uh, like most of the SWE interns, I had uh, two DSA based interview rounds. Uh, so SW interns do not have to give, you know, system design or Googliness rounds, or which are the HR rounds basically. So once I had those uh, two rounds completed, uh, it was a long wait. I think uh, it was during the pujas, uh, Duga Puja, it was on to me. I woke up and I saw the mail that I had been selected uh, for uh, Google SWE internship this summer. And yeah, yeah, it was like a perfect uh, Durga Puja blessing for me. Okay, that's really good. That's really awesome, Arnav. So, you know, folks, it was totally off campus. It was not that Arnav, since he's in IST Shippu, that is one of the best colleges in our country. He did not get that opportunity on campus. It was totally off campus. So, if you are someone who is willing to work hard and who can, like, you know, have the ability, you can build over time and then you can just apply directly. You know, a lot of time people are saying like if you are gym, considering that general engineering mail, so there is pretty much less chance for you to get into Google because people are saying this, you know, it's only girls who get into Google. But I guess Arnav is someone who you look, who can all can look up to and then just can understand like also you can get into the place where Arnav got it. So, you know, like also I mentioned about that, I will be having you and if anyone has any sort of questions for you. So, Abhi Patel asked me, you know, like uh, what exactly is working inside Google? So, is it like you are solving CP level problems over there or you are building something, uh, you know, out of the box or what exactly are you building in Google that is making it so much different? That's a good question, Abhi. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, like, the short answer would be no, it's not like solving CP level problems uh, because 
I think hardly you will ever come across uh, something which you know applies to competitive programming. Um, so, in other words, uh, like uh, the problem. So, in my, my specific project was of building a notification system for an internal tooling service. So, I was a part of the Google Ads team. So, I had to build that um, like service. Uh, we had to build that from scratch. Uh, but uh, as i said it's not like uh, you can apply directly the concepts that you learned from competitive programming though they don't generally apply on day to day software engineering life there might be rare cases where you're working on something uh, very tricky or very uh, you know like uh, for example let's say uh, you're working in the google maps uh, algorithm so in that case you might have to apply some graph algorithm logics uh, but other than that most of the day, like the day to day software engineering journey does not involve a lot of uh, those cp level problems and uh, it wasn't something that i had to build out of the box it was mainly uh, like you know software engineering is more like a jigsaw puzzle right you take something from here from there put all of them together and you build something so i used the notification service that's already there at google uh, which is which basically you know google pay google drive users so i used that same service i used some templating engines that's again there at google so google has this you know internal things for everything they have their internal web id they have their internal uh, you know kubernetes thing so yeah so we use them and uh, that was my project and yeah yeah i also with their github resort even use it you know like github is it has their own version control system so maybe under the tender talk about that yeah. also for a while we like what is it like special about that and what is goal exactly using it say ha ah, so yeah so uh, again uh so google uses this thing called mercurial so it's it's very similar to github uh, like git uh which is also a distributed version control system but the thing is mercurial is much simpler than git uh the syntax are a bit uh i would say more easier to understand but what happens is uh since we are from a git background we thought like git is the only thing that's out there but when it came to google i was like okay wait there are a bunch of other tools uh, but it was very easy to pick up because the basic fundamental knowledge is still the same uh, and, and but the terms are different like you do not have something like branches uh, it's a bit uh, different in that case and uh, we at google we don't call it pull request we call it change list so these are some certain terms that we had to get accustomed to but again the basic things basic uh, the fundamental concepts remain the same the just the syntax and the the outer layer is different yeah okay like even i just came to know about this because i initially thought that it was like a replacement for github now okay now i get it it's a replacement for mm-hmm. git which is google is using that's really awesome so and i'm like you ultimately right. you know like you were building the notification system and that is i am pretty much sure that is impacting life of billions so you know like I guess you mm-hmm. must have prepared for the question like why do you want to join Google? So what do you think is other factors which you know actually motivated you to work in Google? Like for me, it might one of the reason might be like getting free food, amazing food. Like what were the reason for you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I like I did not have the chance to get like uh, enjoy the food over there because the internship was online. But I think it's pretty awesome because even my interview during my interview the last five minutes. the interviewer was talking about the food at google so that's the you know the craze of uh, google street food i think uh, other than that i think the you know first of all the answer is that it's google after all the google right so why would i leave an opportunity like that uh, but uh, coming uh, to you know specific points uh, what i heard a lot about google was its culture uh, i think that's every time we hear google we know about the culture how the developers are treated uh, uh, like in in an organization like that and having an experience a first hand experience of that um, just made me like you know like at google uh, everything is built uh, like in a way which makes developers life easy like you don't have to think of uh, like a lot of developer have this when you join a new organization what happens you have to build your local setup of the actual project uh you know you have to get used to the uh, the style guys and everything right so those are a lot of uh, mundane tasks that take away a lot of your uh, like concentration on the actual problem the actual logic that you're solving but at google uh, we have automated everything like that so we have our own uh, like as i said the ide which uh, is integrated with the version control system 
so it shows the comments the reviews and everything at the same time it's integrated with the build system so if i import a particular library uh, it automatically changes the build configuration and next time when i build it takes that change into consideration so as a result what happens is it's more developer centric so you can focus more on the code logic so and this kind of culture this kind of work environment is something that i want to be a part of i wanted to be a part of for a long time and that's one of the big reasons i wanted to join google and there are obviously some other perks as well i think the brand name that comes with it uh, the, the the you know like the sheer amount of knowledgeable people you are around at google that's just crazy like uh with i'm just talking to a random uh, googler and turns out he that he's an icpc finalist then uh, then another googler turns out to be the uh, core contributor to the c++ language and i was like this is crazy like the tools that i'm using the tools that i'm working with there are actual authors contributors who are working at google along with me so yeah, just the thought uh, makes me just want to be a part of this amazing work culture and be a part of google yeah absolutely like you know like when you talk about and mention about the automation which google has and that is pretty much you know sort of expected because the organization sort of we can say mark the journey for kubernetes so you know talking about that is of course something like Correct. google will be that and of course like google is promoting open source like talking about that not only for their own employees but even for students mm-hmm. like us like uh, google summer of code it also helps me get into the open source ecosystem so yeah so google is ultimately one of the companies right. everyone wants to join in and thanks and for giving your views now here yeah, i'm talking about like how exactly the hierarchy works like so you know when i joined it was like i had i was given a buddy who would be you know surrounding me around like you know, this is a thing this is that thing sort of i was given a buddy then i had my hr who was you know tackling my hr based issues and then i had my manager hmm. so you know with my manager i was he was my like you know direct boss whom i was hmm. reporting and i also had a mentor in between to like whom i was interacting with in the process so these were the sort of people i was interacting and this was a hierarchy but it was a straight cut thing not so much complex and it was good actually to be my opinion so you know how does hierarchy works for you in google yeah um I would say it's pretty much similar as well. I think it's pretty generic uh, all over the industry. Like even in Microsoft, some of my friends said they have the same structure. Uh, even at Google, uh, we had uh, like we call them host and co-host. They are going to be your reporting uh, managers, kind of thing, or they will be talking to you. They will be basically leading you for the and guiding you for the project. And uh, we also had this one mentor. with whom uh, he's also a fellow uh, like a software engineer and but they are they are not in the same team so in our case the host and co-host we are in the same team but the other mentor they are just from a different team they're just assigned to you you can ask them questions about you know interview preparation or how to be a better you know uh, make sure that your internship is experience is much better you can ask the, those kind of questions to them and when it comes to uh, questions regarding your particular project then those will be uh, mostly asked uh, to the you know the, the host and the co-host so those were the person and even uh, during evaluations as well the host and the co-hosts uh, like uh, feedbacks matter the most yeah so so that's it so host a co-host and a mentor okay. and also uh, i think sweet work uh, alone uh, like they are not paired i think for step interns they are grouped uh, or paired maybe but sweet interns they have to work alone on the project yeah. okay okay that sounds interesting because like you know for me uh, my manager was like vice president and my mentor was uh, assistant vice president so all of them were in the same team so it was like that and like hmm. as you mentioned in google so it is basically who was my buddy was exactly so yeah i got the question is pretty much correct okay. so so very well like you know yeah. uh, freely able to share your ideas like maybe you want to insure some of the things like where you given the opportunity to share that or mm-hmm. where is only like you know seniors sds can take part in the decision making role or what was it like how much freedom were you given exactly so again this is one of the thing uh, about google so as an intern so when i'm in the meeting or when i'm uh, like you know interacting with them i don't feel like i'm an intern i feel like i'm a full time engineer just who has been working with them for a long time and uh, so that's kind of how they treat interns and i th- uh, and as a result of which initially i was kind of scared to like you know uh, ask questions or doubts i thought like maybe after the meeting i will just reach out to my host and ask them 
but eventually uh, my host uh, like you know encouraged me to ask questions on the meeting itself so and when i started doing that i started actively taking part in the decision making process not always i was able to give you know some constructive uh, like advice but most of the time i was able to have a you know a bit good dis- uh, discussion with them uh, which kind of helped uh, uh, so for example i remember this one scenario uh, where we were discussing about setting up the project and uh, i had one bunch of doubts and it ended up being an issue uh, that we had to document so that's how like so me asking the doubt uh help them notice that there is this uh, particular information that's lacking in the documentation so that's how i indirectly uh, you know contribute contributions to the uh, project so i would say they, the freedom is given to us but a lot of interns uh, like myself uh, i used to be like you know shy out from uh, asking questions or being a part of it but uh, if, like if someone tries to do that i think it's going to be best for them as well as for the entire team yeah even like i feel the same and like you know initially people feel shy or shy like because you know we feel like we're just starting out and they're working for our own you know couple of years say 20 25 years and like question which we are asking maybe that's pretty much stupid and it will be you know waste of time for them to tackle us but i guess even my manager said to me like you should ask as many questions as you want because at least that shows us that you are interested so yeah mm-hmm. folks if you are starting out so of course you know try your best to ask any sort of questions which you are you are having don't feel that your question is small that is not valued enough so yeah feel free to ask whatever you have so now and i'm talking you know just to the main segment of this podcast is uh, how to convert internship to ppo so what was your journey and how did you make it yeah so i actually had this question a lot during before my interview i think like just one year back during this time i had this question like you know after a couple of months i have my internship what should i do during this particular period of time to make sure that it helps me uh, during my internship period the internship period is very less right it's like uh, 10 weeks correct for me it was 10 weeks for others it can be like 8 to 12 weeks at max if it's a summer internship right and out of that uh, you know 10 weeks the initial 2 weeks are just like you trying to get onboarded with the project and trying to understand the, how things work around because it's new right it's new for i think for most of the people who are watching this is going to be a new experience uh, and the last week is just going to be you wrapping up everything up so all in all you have like 7 weeks to complete your project and that's very less time and that's what the kind of uh, thing that i was worried about like what if i don't get to complete my project so the few things that i noticed and uh, what helped me was that uh, you should ab- absolutely know how to work with a version control system like like for example as i said git uh, as we were discussing uh, a couple of minutes earlier like uh working with like every company that you work with be it a startup be it a big organization or maybe just like a your own a project or major project i think a version control system is an absolute necessity right and um, if you know how to deal with a version control system like git or anything uh, i w- i would suggest to go with git because that's widely used you will find a lot of resources out there and most of the companies will use something which is a variant of that even at google we had this one tool uh, one uh, you know doc article which showed that if you are a git user how can you shift easily to mercurial so those are the kind of documents that you will find easily online and um, in your um, organization as well so learn a basic version control system and it's kind of shocking to know how very few people actually know git at this level because you know we know that the interviews mostly focus on database and uh, algorithms so students tend to stick to dsc and they since they do not have a lot of dev experience they don't uh, try to work with git they find work arounds like you know directly uploading on github on something like that right but i would suggest you to know the basic uh, git uh, the commands how they work what is rebase what is merge how cherry pick works and all this kind of thing how to work with merge conflicts because that's uh, going to be a lot of difficult thing during a software engineering time and uh, so that's the first thing and i think i had a, a good experience experience with git so it helped me you know saved a lot of time trying to learn uh, mercurial during my internship period the second thing would be if possible know the tech stack now uh, in some organization they tell you the tech stack the recruiter if you ask the recruiter which team you will be working on they will tell you that this is the team this is the uh, tech stack that you can work on so these are the resources that you can follow at google uh, it did not happen and, and i think uh, like in most cases that does not happen but what you can do is you can take a 
educative gigs you can ask your seniors like which tech stack is mainly used so at google uh, we came i came to know that they use c++ golang which is built by google obviously and they use java i knew c++ and golang uh, but i did not knew uh, java so what i thought was that maybe during this time i would just learn a little bit of java little bit of spring book uh, spring book uh, to know how java works in you know, while building real world applications and i made some contributions on open source pro- platforms uh, related to, in in this particular tech stack so this helped me so let's say you are uh, you're an intern and you join this uh, you join the particular company your project has to be built with this particular language and if you have to spend like two more weeks trying to get accustomed to that language so you will be left with just five more weeks to actually work on the project so the more you uh, you know get ahead with your preparation uh, beforehand the easier it becomes right and since you already have an internship i don't think you will be like people will be like a lot of pressure so you can take this time to uh, you know learn about a particular new language even if it's not used it's going to be for your benefit as uh, at the end of the day correct um uh, so that's second point a third point i think uh, is uh, as a like a software developer intern your main job is going to be to write code and you cannot just write any code right so you have to make sure that the code that you write is good and it's uh, readable uh, so and what i mean by that is like make basically writing clean code and there are certain points about clean code um, there is this one you know book called clean code by martin fowler a uh, very famous book and so we like what you can do is you can just go through those points how to properly name variable when to use a nested uh, loop when not to use it wh- uh, what kind of uh, you know patterns to avoid what kind of patterns one should follow and all those things uh, if you know because what happens is uh, in you know organizations like google every piece of line every so every line of code goes gets heavily you know reviewed a bunch of times like every comment every word of the comment the grammar of the comment gets reviewed and so the better the, the you know the the way like the more uh, properly you write the code from the first uh, the easier it will be in the review process and you will be getting your uh, you know your pull request or your cls uh, reviewed and merged really quickly and that's going to be helpful to you so that's one of them and then um, you know talking about clean code i think another thing that comes to my mind is like design patterns uh so one can focus on uh, you know design patterns and if you know some of the design patterns is going to be really helpful uh most there is going to be a chance that you have to write a design doc as well although that's not very complicated it's pretty simple but you know just you can just google uh, you can just read about how design doc works what are the various topics under uh, design doc that has to be uh, that has to be you know uh, covered like you know requirements um, user interface implementation design and lastly i would say uh, testing so testing is a big part of software engineering journey uh, without writing a test you cannot tell that your code works uh, or your code is going to work so and uh, like you have to and i think in most organization also uh, you, like there, you have, there is a minimum threshold of test coverage that has to be um, reached otherwise your code won't get accepted so knowing how to write unit tests how to write functional tests uh is going to be you know really helpful so these are the kind of things if you have a little bit of knowledge beforehand like in this couple of months uh during the internship period that's going to be really uh, that's going to come handy okay that's really you know like what ever i thought i kind of like no one has ever said this things even when i was finding <coughs> it was me who was discovering this it's on my own i totally agree you know initially when i joined barclays as well so i initially thought everyone knows git git is like just english so how can you just don't know how to work with git so you know there are people and the value mention who miss out on git and that is really i never thought actually there might be someone who is into tech industry for some time and i have not worked with git or you know related thing and i know like i was a bit curious because you mentioned about design patterns and design docs so like how about if, if you tell people who don't know what design patterns are so maybe if you can tell that then you can share a bit more on how they can actively get involved in this thing sure yeah so talking about uh, design patterns um, design patterns are simple like you know reusable solutions in simple words in uh, what happens was that uh, i think the book was written so there is this one famous book uh, 
called Design Patterns. Uh, it was written by four uh, C++ developers. They are called the Gang of Four, and uh, they in that book they have listed like twenty three design patterns. What they said was that this uh, in most of the programming language, you know, software engineering journey, uh, there will be time when you will coming across uh, certain situations where you can apply any of these design patterns, and these. 23 patterns are like you know tested solutions that are going to be readable going to be scalable as well so you can just blindly apply them correct so it's kind of like you know you know je days we had this uh, format of like integral we know that okay if this is the thing then we can directly apply this particular formula similarly uh, sim- similar we we have design patterns for programming as well and these are like you know language agnostic you can apply them in every language uh I'm not asking, uh, like the you know, as an intern, uh, it's not necessary for you to know all the 23 design patterns by heart. But what you can do is you can just go through the basic ones or the most commonly used ones. Like at Google, we use the builder pattern very commonly. Like most of the time, we use uh, like uh, this builder pattern. And there are other, you know, the, all the patterns are you know classified into three categories: like creational pattern, how objects are going to be created, and then we have behavioral pattern, and then we have structural pattern. So uh i would advise you know to just go through those uh, design patterns uh, try to understand them you will find a lot of these resources online and also they are required for you know lld interviews like low level design interviews although they are not asked uh, at the internship looks intern level but still uh, you know you have a lot of time you can just invest some of them learning these patterns and it's going to really improve your code quality a lot so i think that's what like all about design patterns yeah Okay, thanks, and I'm like you know, initially I guess for folks who are watching this first time and uh, they have not heard the term design pattern, I guess they would be like me who had the first thought if like design pattern means you know building posters. So yeah, that is not something. Okay, now talking forward, uh, kind of like I would like how were your evaluations? Because if we talk about backlist, we had sort of three things. Firstly, it was a internal hackathon which which was organized. Was that we had a midterm evaluation. in in which we were only interacting with our manager who was just you know evaluating our code base and what we work we have done in terms of documentation or anything related and in the final evaluation it was we needed to give the ppt presentation to the entire team so that was how it was for us so and of like how was the evaluation for you it was pretty similar other than the hackathon part um Uh, at google also we had this mid term and final term evaluation mid term was after 5 weeks and final term was in the last week now the in at google the mid term evaluation does not actually matter for the conversion process what matters is the final term uh, the final term evaluation now uh, in in this evaluation what uh, like we had to specify was the number of C- basically the project that we worked on uh, then um, the Like what problems we faced, what achievements, uh, what are our, our most achievements, uh, and other than that, what uh, code contributions we made. So we had to link our you know, CLs and everything in this kind in this evaluation. But the most important thing uh, was actually the uh, what the the feedback given by the mentors and the, uh, the by the host and the co-host. So those were the most. So basically, I would say that um, the CLs, the code contributions, and the feedback given by the host and the co-host, they are mainly the deciding factor whether a particular intern is going to be converted or given the PPT opportunity. Now, in our case, the PPT uh, we had a like a presentation, but that presentation was not again I'm not a part of the final uh, evaluation. It was just to make sure that what I have worked with. the entire team knows what i have worked with what was the, my project during uh, this during my internship period and what i uh, you know accomplished during the internship period so that was all about the uh, you know the presentation uh, it did not kind of affected the uh, conversion process okay that's that's interesting and so you know initially uh, we sort of covered two things as a from like you how the general thoughts about ppo to how to get a ppo then you have given the technical t- uh, tips and tricks which is required to get that hmm. and like what if we talk about soft skills like you know do you think like actually soft skills matter for the conversion process or is it only like google only considers you to have or google or beat any sort of company this they only want you to be just a great coder and be someone who is you know pretty much arrogant like you know i don't want to help out others or it's only me you know i am getting paid i am working i am getting the work done that's all you need so 
is is company is looking for that or is company is like you know having good communication skills and related are also important what do you think on that yeah i i i think soft skills are important uh, not just as a you know software developer but as a human being in general right uh, if you are an arrogant person uh, forget software development it's going to be difficult to you know succeed succeed in life in general uh, and uh, you know there are certain soft skills that will help uh, as an intern it helped me during my internship journey right for example uh, one of the uh, like earlier uh, my mentor uh, like my host she, uh, she told me that i had to be more proactive so this again came from the fact that i was very scared to take a uh, steps decision myself uh, whether to go ahead with this particular issue whether to tag myself uh, whether to assign this particular issue to myself and start working on that i was very scared i always would ask her permission first and then go ahead and uh, so what she suggested was that if you think that this is so like in a way she wanted me to take responsibility of my project and uh, to take the best decision of my project because if you think about it not always you're going to just wait for someone's approval and then start working on it right you kind of have to take a certain decision by yourself and then start working on it and yeah then get an approval and make sure that you are on the right track but you cannot just wait for the particular uh, other person's uh, like um, approval and that's going to be kind of like a waste of time so i started so one advice that i would give to the interns uh, who will be joining their organization is to be proactive uh, take active part in the decisions uh, as we discussed already uh, actively look out for you know things where you can help where you can contribute where you can improve if you see that there is one documentation which is not up to date go ahead and fix that Uh, go ahead and make a pull request and change make sure that um, you know the uh, documentation is up to date and it help, uh, so doing this will not get unnoticed it's going to reflect in your final conversion as well so that's the first thing that i would say this the second thing is um, be open to feedbacks because most of the interns who will be joining uh, i think most of the viewers also this is going to be your uh, first time working at a big organization correct and uh, what i would suggest to you all is that uh, be open to feedback be open to uh, you know listen to what your uh, team lead or your team members or your host and co-host has to say about your performance and and ask them how you can be a better uh, software developer uh, don't ask them how to be a better intern but ask them how to be a better software developer in general and the the thing is uh, in my case what happened was my co-host was at google for 17 years and when i first time when i saw that like he has been at google for 17 years i was like whoa that's a lot of years to be at google and uh, the the thing about is that when i would go ahead or go and asking for his feedback uh, he would raise so nice points that it's, that when i implemented in myself uh, i really saw a lot of improvement like he would uh, like when i asked him like uh, every time when i would uh, you know submit a particular cl the way he would review my seal just just would astonish me like he would uh, suggest me improvements that i never could have thought so my i always ask him a question that how could you come across this particular you know thought process and he said that uh, it has to be from your willingness to write clean code willingness to make sure that the code that you write uh, works a lot of time you know we had we as a student have this kind of mindset that if the code works it works like we'll not touch it again uh, but we we have to make sure that the code that we write has to be readable to other person it should be the most optimized way and uh, these are the things that you can learn when you ask for feedbacks and sometimes the feedbacks might be you know uh, a bit uh, i would say uh, like you should be very much open to feedback you should not feel bad about it like if this if someone makes a comment on your cl make sure you should understand that the comment is made on your cl and not on you uh so it's some, they want to uh, make your code much better so don't take things personal uh take them in a positive way and uh, make sure that you're improving yourself so i would say that a lot of times uh the mentors and the co- the host co-host won't uh, directly give them give feedback by themselves uh so what i would do is every week i would just uh, you know assign a 15 to 30 minutes meeting uh, a one on one meeting because you know feedbacks are i think much better when it's one on one and not in a team setting because it's just relevant to you right so why waste uh, other team members time so i would set up this one on one meetings and we would go ahead uh, like discuss uh, like how i can be a better software developer uh, what aspect should i uh, focus on 
and where can I uh, learn things quickly and implement them and even times like you know i think uh, sometimes it happens that we would after we cover the feedback part we would have conversations about career about finance and you know this particular this internship time is going to be the very few opportunity for you to interact with such senior uh, software developers because once you are uh, you know a full time engineer you're on uh, you're like you have to work on your project you have to work on other projects you will be burdened with a lot of things um, but as an intern you you working on a project at the same time you're able to learn uh, from these experienced persons so make the best use of your time and i think that's a good segue to time managing because uh, you know as an intern there will be a lot of activities like at google we have a bunch of activities there were events always somewhere um, like there's going to be an event on the like golang on a uh, borg on lo- there are a lot of services at google and a lot of employees and there's always an event so if you want you can just you know spend the entire two months just watching being a part of a lot of these events uh, so what you have to so in a way what uh, i would suggest is make sure that you manage your time properly uh, that you focus on uh, your project you give a lot of time because that's going to be the deciding factor for your conversion uh, after all your target is to get up in a uh, if possible a pre-placement offer uh, then uh, make sure that you complete your project and at the same time you put some uh, you know you set up some time for you know interacting with other team members interacting with other uh, you know other interns if possible like what they're working on what's their experience like and so there was this uh, you know thing called uh, meme gen at uh, google where basically everyone posts meme and there are some of the really really good memes uh, like uh, memes on internal jokes i did not even know that this platform exists until like you know 4 5 weeks because after that i interacted with one of the interns and they were like okay i am very active on meme gen i was like what is that <laughs> so interact with other interns as well know their journey what they are working on and um, i think yeah these are the things that i would say also uh, as you said ask a lot like even you said that like you have to ask a lot of questions but at the same time i would say that just don't ask stupid questions like uh, make sure the question that you ask has like you have researched on the question properly and just don't tell like uh, hi i'm getting an error in my code like that's like what they will do so like uh, make sure that you uh, give proper context like what the error is what the error code is which code you're getting the error what you're trying to achieve what you have tried and you have failed and all this thing when you put a lot of context in the question the, there are going to be two things first uh, the other person is going to know exactly what your error is and second uh, the you, you will get the answer much quicker so that will help you save a lot of time and uh, you know the other person will also have not like they won't have a lot of headache trying to deal with you because asking proper question asking the correct questions uh, you know creates a good impression and uh, i would say like a lot of uh, like juniors of mine they have this tendency to ask very stupid questions so uh, i'm not saying don't ask questions Ob- obviously ask questions because you have to it's not expected from you to learn uh, know all of these things beforehand but make sure that you resource the question and you ask proper question and there is one more thing uh there is this website called nohello.com right so don't go ahead do any chat and just say hi don't do that to any team member do any you know you know slack channel or anything uh put all the context uh, make sure that uh, you know and if you can anticipate what the other person is going to ask put them put the answer already in your question as well so i think these are the kind of uh, topics uh, like things if you keep in mind during your internship period it's going to be helpful for you to save time as well as you know the other person to give you the answers the right answers quickly and it's going to you know improve your general experience overall now uh, is there anything else you would like to add on kid yeah absolutely no i know i totally agree uh, the thing which you mentioned like you know don't ask stupid questions like yeah like firstly google it like if you're getting the answer directly go with that if you are not getting and if you have tried different methods then ask it like you know just asking randomly with then without trying it's like correct he is not your like you know sort of servant who is like you know just hey I'm, this is not working solve this this is not how it works actually and exactly. you know i would say like yeah. open source uh, and has actually helped in the process because whenever we are working in open source as well like if we have been a contributor into bitcoin I, i'm pretty sure they have so much experience uh working in the ecosystem so these are some of the things which we sort of get accustomed or you know these are the sort of our secondary needs like when we are asking someone something right. we follow a sort of issue template while we are uh, creating an issue which you know just like you know uh, build this uh, error this no this like we follow a thing how can we reproduce it like how did you reproduce this sort of like sort of thing so 
following those things i guess end up somewhere or the other open source is the thing which folks should be trying out because uh, a lot of people are not trying and i guess if beat any field like if they are interested in say blockchain beat or if we say simply they are starting out in web or ml everything is there on the ecosystem you can contribute to anywhere you want to and there are things which you can like learn and maybe if you are just starting out like suppose if you are just watching and if you are in a first year second year and you can gain this sort of experience while contributing into open source because that's how i started and i guess there is some point even arna would agree with me so do you agree with me arna absolutely yeah. absolutely I, i think yeah you've raised a great point and now that i look back to it most a lot of this experience that i gathered was actually from open source because open source is a true reflection of what happens in the software dev right most of these open source maintainers are actually developers at uh, you know most of the big organizations so what they do is they follow the same practice that they follow in the workplace in the open source like you ask proper questions you ask you know you have to follow the template commenting adding unit tests uh, they have this you know kind of uh, you know github actions which make sure that your your pull request does not merge until you follow the style guides until you ha- have a linter uh, you've used the linter so all of this thing and uh, maybe like if you uh, can spend this two like couple of months working on some open source projects you will have a good experience working at hand uh, in a uh, you know uh, like in your organization and uh, i think you raise a good point because i remember during uh, my first feedback uh, uh, my co-host who, which i said like he was like 17 years at google he said this one thing that i saw one of his seal and uh, how did you uh, like how 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 were you able to uh, you know write make the seal so quickly so he asked me this question and i kind of knew the uh, where he is coming from so he said that a lot of interns that he has worked with they get confused as how to deal with this large code base so uh, by the way google has a mono repo so like everything is just on one repository so uh, so his point of view was that uh, how i was able to find the specific part where i had to make the change and to my like now that i look back to it like that uh, you know that experience of working with that specific uh, you know like which particular file to work with ha- that has come to me from my contribution at uh, like in you know, the bitcoin project because the bitcoin project is also very big and when i was working on that i kind of knew how to you know abstract the things that i don't have to deal with like let's say this particular service i will just assume that okay let's assume that this particular file works the way it says and i'll just go ahead with the rest of it so uh this kind of you know experience i think open source gives which eventually helps you in your uh, you know developer experience and i i think that's why a lot of you know uh, open source developers are really good software developers in general yeah absolutely like you know in folks you did not be like you know that open source is very scary or something like that you can just start out like you know majorly there are three things which everyone has like you know selecting organizations yeah. then you have the thing like you know how can you just contrib- start contribution and what all things you need so i have tried my best creating some of the videos in case you were interested you know i will be listing them in the description check them out and i know like taking it forward so how do you think uh or what do you think you will be doing in future or you know if you have any final thoughts for people who are watching you so what will those be so anything anything like you know if i miss up say if i miss any sort of questions which i should have asked you or if you want to share some of things from your this is a segment in mm-hmm. which you can share anything you want so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so uh yeah i would say that uh like mm, if a lot of people like uh, as i said i i know a lot of my juniors and from that i'm like kind of drawing an assumption that a lot of folks uh, just focus on you know data structures and algorithm to uh, get crack interviews and i think there's nothing wrong in that that's absolutely fine because obviously by the end of four years you expect to get a job and most of this job requires you the knowledge of data structures and algorithm so why not work on that but i would suggest at the same time uh, dive into the dev uh like how the dev life works how you know software like basically be a part of a software journey you can do that by being a part of a startup uh, uh you can get a remote job maybe during your college time work on uh, you know different uh, projects or if you cannot get a like a uh, like a startup maybe then just work on your uh, some open source projects uh like you can start with your like you with a lot of your friends can start up an open source project contribute together and so that's going to be like you're building a small team among yourself try to maintain a repo like maintain your projects uh, update the dependencies and all those things 
and contribute to other organizations and so we, like being like if you spend some time doing this what happens is uh, it becomes much easier to transition into the developer journey because uh, what otherwise what might happen is you are uh, like a lot of people say that you know uh, i can solve data structures and algorithm problems but when it comes to you know building real life applications i'm stuck uh, i cannot build this particular thing or like i have an idea in my mind i want to implement it but i cannot do that so if you uh, like is also like uh, just an advice to the juniors and everyone who's watching that if you are spending some time uh, on dsa at the same time spend some time you know going through the software uh, like the software development practices that are followed how to write clean code as we discussed today design patterns you know system design how like big architectures work uh, there are a lot of you know, like videos a lot of articles that you can find on hacker news and other platforms which you can read them and uh, you can get an idea about how software develop like the software engineering journey works because this is a career you have chosen and i think going through those articles those blogs will actually make you much more curious about this particular career and you will eventually love this uh, journey uh, so uh, i would say that's an advice like uh, be curious be uh, like open to learning and uh, like all this reach out to the like if you have any questions reach out to the persons like i i I'm, i'm i'm pretty sure like if you have any questions regarding devrel or how to be like you know in open source or something like that you can reach out to onikit on twitter so there are lots of people who uh, have already been in this uh, journey you can always reach out to them you can ask questions on open platforms and um, just I, i also don't forget to enjoy i, I also uh, yeah so during the internship also you have to make sure that you enjoy uh, this is going to be like uh you will have, like a lot of people if you have an offline internship that's going to be amazing uh if it's online uh, but still uh, make sure that you interact have fun with your team members get to know everyone and uh, make sure that you those 10 weeks you make the best of uh, like make the best out of them uh, i think yeah i will just conclude with the uh, if you have anything to add uh, go ahead thanks a lot and like you know from the j day still now like what i have seen a common trait in you which i have not changed is like you know you have always stayed grounded so that is something no like you were doing so great in life as of now and i am pretty much sure you will be doing bigger things in the coming time you will be contributing more to the society you know building more a name you know at least bringing the name of our city durgapur into the map in some time and i'm really happy to see and always folks for you like you know stay grounded you know don't let your confidence or ego take over the ego so that's something which i wanted to add and also like folks and have written a blog sharing his journey the conquest conversion and he's a great technical writer so i will be sharing the link for this blog in which how to get uh, you know a ppo offer so i will be listing that down in the description so if you have anything to ask folks like feel free to comment that down and i will be trying to answer as many questions as possible and also a lot of you since asked me you know how to get a remote job and how things work and everything so if you want to have arnav again with us also mention that so maybe arnav will join us soon and uh i hope he will do right <laughs> yes absolutely it's always a fun to have conversation awesome. with you like yeah uh, yeah so if you have any questions like feel free to get in touch with arnav i am pretty sure he is a great guy and he will be answering to every questions you have and uh we will be having everything in the dm and if you want me to make more videos or related podcasts on anything you want to feel free to dm me or get in touch with me in my dms all socials and everything will be in the dm and if most most importantly all the resources we are going to talk about will be in the description so yeah don't forget to check that out and yeah if i would have been you i would have subscribed so feel free to subscribe okay bye bye